Join me as we delve into the captivating history of postal service in this vibrant city of Hong Kong, China. From ancient Chinese postal systems to the British era post boxes scattered throughout Hong Kong, we'll uncover the secrets and stories they hold. And all this through an epic post box sunrise to sunset challenge. Don't miss out on this incredible journey. Hit that subscribe button and join us as we explore the rich tapestry of Hong Kong's postal history. So get on that stagecoach, pour a cup of tea, settle yourself down because remember, Coasty always delivers. Good afternoon, welcome back to Coasty Explores here on part three, the finale of the Postbox Challenge. We're back at the map for a quick review of what we've done in parts one and two. We started here on Lantau Island at the Shep Pick Prison for a George V wall box. We made our way round to Mui Wo and caught the ferry to Chung Chow. We headed in to get the Queen Victoria and Scottish post box in Central before taking a ferry back out to Lama Island. We are then now at the start of part three on the south side of Hong Kong Island. The job today is to go to Lei Yu Mun, catch a ferry across to the Kowloon uh, part of Hong Kong and see three post boxes here before heading out to the east coast and getting the last three and hopefully, hopefully getting to Palm Springs right near the Chinese mainland border for sunset. Can we do it? Let's find out. And we've made it to Stanley. And this is the new-ish uh, Stanley Police Station because right opposite the road, on the other side, covered in bamboo scaffolding, is the old Stanley Police Station, the most southerly outpost here in Hong Kong back in the day. And this was built in 1859 and housed both the, the British Army and the police um, for many, many years, right up until 1974. Uh, the Japanese camp uh, in World War II, the police officers, they, they were here in this building and I think they were the ones who built a morgue out the back. Looks like it's being regenerated today and hopefully will be some sort of museum or something moving forward, I'm not sure. I'd love to go inside but we can't at the moment. Right next door though is the current oldest post office still in operation in Hong Kong. And here it is, it's Stanley Post Office. This dates from 1937. Uh, closed today at this time, but um, reopens on Monday. But it's got a really interesting box outside, no longer in use. And it is a George VI wall box. If we zoom in, we can see the V1, uh, meaning George VI, George VI if we remember it was Queen Elizabeth's father. Now as it say, this wall type posting box bearing the cipher of King George VI was previously installed at the Stanley Post Office. No longer in use, we've got a what looks like a stamp machine, um, but come check it out next time you're in Stanley. It's a beautiful old building, but we can't hang around because we need to get on. Got to catch the bus now. A uh, beautiful scenic bus ride around the east coast uh, and then catch a little ferry across to the Kowloon Peninsula. Let's go. We've made it onto the top deck, front row on the top deck. That's where you should be on uh, a double decker bus. And we are just about to go across my favourite bridge uh, and it is the Titan Reservoir. And the Titan Reservoir was built in officially opened in 1918 by Sir Henry May, the governor at the time. It's a wonderful vista as we go across. Check that out down there. If you like wakeboarding, they often do it down there. Right, let's find out about something else from the students. We have got another one here. So it says, how did, how did they keep the mail safe? inside the post box. Well, I know a bit about this because they made the locks in my hometown of Wolverhampton. It's a company called Chubb. So I think we should go over to our roving reporter, Senior Coasty Explorers in Wolverhampton to tell us a bit more. Good morning, Senior Coasty Explorers. 
We are here in the centre of Wolverhampton on a chilly February morning, not to look at trams, but this building across the ring road. The tram building was built in 1899 to manufacture high security locks. Why is this of interest to us? Well, Chubb supplied the locks for every post box in the UK and Hong Kong. The unusual triangular shaped building has the year Chubb started their lock business, which was in 1818, in Roman numerals on the top of the five story factory building. Charles Chubb had started as a ship's ironmonger back in 1804 in Portsmouth. The building is quiet today, but once 300 staff toiled to make the famous locks, which were sent to every corner of the world. An unusual fact about the uh, locks on post boxes, there was no master key. Each box had its own individual key, meaning the postman carried a large bunch of keys to empty all the boxes. With 6,500 different combinations, these locks are not for picking. Just look at how tight this road is though. They definitely weren't thinking of double-decker buses when they uh, built this road back in 1918. And we've made it back into the city, onto the waterfront at, here at Sai Wan Ho. Sai Wan Ho on the sort of east coast of Hong Kong Island. And we need to go over to the other side, to Kowloon side, where there is one in an old fishing village. A good friend of mine used to live here in Sai Wan Ho. Big shout out to him, he's now in Devon. The youngest man to wear a flat cap regularly here in Hong Kong. You know who you are, you are. So hope you're doing well. Right, let's catch the ferry over to Kowloon. Not a real one, unfortunately. <sighs> Amazing what you find around here, though. Crossing a really interesting piece of waterway here. This is Le Yu Mun, the entrance to the Eastern Harbour here in Hong Kong. On the left, as you look, is Kowloon, and on the right is Hong Kong Island. So, a real narrow waterway, and it was here on the 18th of December after bombing the two batteries either side uh, of the harbour. Uh, Japanese, six battalions of Japanese troops crossed over to Hong Kong Island, and then within seven days, on the 25th of December, uh, the British and the Allied troops signed the surrender, handing Hong Kong over to Japan until 1945. Right, we need to head into this wonderful old fishing village here, Le Yumun, to try and find a George V post box. And I've never been here, so let's go. The size of these crabs, lobsters, all sorts of things down here. Now, it's taken a, a while for me to find this one. I'm okay, thank you, thank you. I'm trying to get me in for a bite to eat. Now, here it is. It's actually on the main walking street here. I just didn't go far enough. And it is the George V again, post box. Amongst all these wonderful fishing restaurants. Okay, next postcard. This one is of the, I think this is the current head sorting office on uh, this side of Hong Kong, actually and we're gonna post this one. And this one's going to my mum to say thank you for everything that you've ever done for me. Uh, and she loves fish. She's a seafood person. So I'm gonna pop this in, the George V post box here in Le Yumun. And let's see how long that takes to get back to the UK. Right, let's head off. I think we shall get a taxi or Uber now to the next one, which shouldn't be too far away if we're in a car. Let's go. Okay, let's grab a little Uber there. And we are outside St. Catherine's School for Girls. If you ever want to come and find this next post box, and it is a dead end in what is a 1960s estate. So, you're asking me, why is there a George V post box here? And here it is. Beautiful. There it is with the V in the middle. Why is this George V post box here in a 1960s estate when we know George V was 1910 to 1936? So that question 
that I posed at about seven o'clock this morning when it was still dark. Let's find out why. Well, in the 1960s, Hong Kong started to embrace its booming manufacturing industry with a rise in demand for migrant workers as millions of mainlanders arrived seeking better lives. This hungry army of workers satisfied a rising city's appetite for cheap labour. With people came the building of giant housing estates and schools such as this one here, St Catharines. The Hong Kong government asked Britain to send as many post boxes over, so some were dug up, some that weren't being used were shipped over here to Hong Kong, and hence why we have a George V post box here on a traditional 1960s housing estate. There we go, folks. They're all around and not because they've been here for 100 years, but because they were brought here in the 1960s. We've got a race on, it's three o'clock, and I've still got four to do, and they are about as stretched out across Hong Kong, new territories as possible. So let's head down the hill and maybe catch the MTR, let's go. We are at Shep Kip Mai and Shep Kip Mai exit, two, uh, exit B2 we're looking for and then we've got a five minute walk to what potentially could be our nicest setting of a post box today because it's called Magnolia Road in Kowloon Tong so uh, it's a five minute walk, let's go. I'm starving. Very tempting, but no. We've got Casia Road, Begonia Road, and now Magnolia Road. This is Kowloon Tong, very affluent area. And let me know in the comments, I'm pretty sure this is where Bruce Lee had a house and maybe where Jackie Chan still has a house, I'm not sure. Write it in the comments below and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, right. I believe in about 20 yards time, we're gonna come across a George V wall box. I've just remembered, I haven't been hugging the uh, pillar boxes today to figure out if they're A or B. So there's one left right at the end. Just remind me, remind me to hug it. Okay, we have it here, I hope. There's a wall. Is it a wall box? Yes, it is. And it is George V. Post box number 55, there we go. Right, we now have to get to the east coast of Sai Kong as quick as possible. So I'm gonna ring an Uber and get there sharpish. Let's go. Oh, one thing, I forgot about the postcard. Yeah, let's do another postcard while we're here. This one is going to a family member who we just got in contact with over the summer and he's been collaborating with me on our family tree and we share great 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 grandfathers and we also have a connection to asia so this one's going to cousin phil in kent so let's put it in george v and let's have a little look oh on the front that is the original uh, 1940s general post office a sketch of it there you go phil this is whisking its way down to you in Kent. Right, let's get to Sai Kung. And we Ubered it here, of course. And we are in Sai Kung. I'd love to show you Sai Kung, but there's not enough time, but we're right on the east coast here. And here we have it, our penultimate, oh, not quite the penultimate one. It is our third from last. Um, it is the George V post box here. And it is a wall box. And it is not in the best condition, not the best one we've seen today. We now need to get to University Station. And as we head towards University Station, let's take another question from the kids. And this one says, did Hong Kong stamps have the British monarch's head on them before 1997? That is a great question. Let's find out all about stamps in Hong Kong. The first stamps were issued on the 8th of December, 1862. The portrait of Queen Victoria was adorned on a total of six stamps which were issued from two cents up to 96 cents, each value corresponding to a specific postage rate at the time. 
Hong Kong celebrated its 50th anniversary as a British colony in 1891. To mark the occasion, the post office issued a commemorative stamp, a limited edition Queen's Head overprinted with 1841 Hong Kong Jubilee 1891. And barring Edward VIII, each monarch after Queen Elizabeth also had their head adorning stamps in Hong Kong. On December 25, 1941, Hong Kong surrendered to Japan, beginning the Japanese occupation of Hong Kong. The postal service was resumed in early 1942 and 20 or 21 Japanese definitive editions were introduced for use in Hong Kong. Most of the British stamps were safely hidden until the Japanese surrender. Some were kept in vaults at the Central Post Office and the Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Building, while others were sent to Australia and South Africa for safekeeping. Postcards are a modern phenomenon dating back to the 1860s, around the time when stamps came to Hong Kong. The first postcard produced in Hong Kong was in 1879, and the early ones did not contain any pictures, they were known as postal stationery cards. This postcard was sent from Dr. Idle, private secretary to the governor to his son in May 1884. Look how he ingeniously wrote in two directions getting twice as much information onto his postcard. Postcards from the Far East were popular back in the late 19th and early 20th century, along with pictures of exotic fancies, animals, but also disasters. Here is a postcard of the Great Fire at Happy Valley Racecourse in 1918, where over 3,000 people lost their lives. And one of the wreck of the ship Alaska that claimed 2,000 lives in 1874. The grand old colonial buildings were also popular. Here is one of the Supreme Court building in the early 20th century, and it's still here 100 years on. The visit of the then Prince of Wales and future Edward VIII to Hong Kong was illustrated by these two postcards in 1922. As a social historian, you can really use these old postcards from Hong Kong to learn a lot about the society. Here you can see how rich Chinese and Westerners travelled around the colony. And these two show us how Chinese people use their free time to play games. made it to the penultimate one. It is just after five o'clock. The sun is going down. We are outside Chung Chi College, which is part of the Chinese university here in Hong Kong. And I can see it in the distance on the other side of the road. I wonder if it has been here since the reign of King George V, 1910, 1936, or if um, it's been put here since the university was built in the 1960s. This is the old road to Taipo, so this road has been around for a long time. Uh, but me thinks it was probably put in when the university was put in. Okay, let's cross the road and try and get to the box. And here it is, a George V wall box here on the old Taipo Road. Beautiful. Now still in service as far as I know but who on earth is posting mail in that box on this hill we've got student accommodation right behind these trees but as far as I know they're not going to be coming up here to post there'll be new newer post boxes down there so let me know in the comments below if you've ever posted in this box now I was just thinking about this there's only one way to test to see if this box is still in use and people are still coming to collect, is if we send the final postcard. And the final postcard is of, well, it's the Pedder Street clock. And it was just around the corner from the second generation general post office. And I can't find a picture of it, but I'd love to find it. So if you've got one, let me know. Now this is going out to Senior Coasty Explores, our roving reporter in England. This is my dad. Thanks for everything. Get me inspired and into history. So here we go. Let's see if you get this. There we go. Right now, we've just got the uh, very hard task of trying to get to the mainland border where the final one is on a compound just north of Yunlong. So, is there anyone I can flag down? Let's have a little look. 
Looks like we've got someone here. Let's check it out. Let's see if we can get a lift up. Okay. Hi, yeah. Oh, it's Ida. You're right, Ida. Yeah. Could Where you? Are you going? Palm Springs up yeah. at the border. Sure. Can you give me a lift? Let's go. Let's get in. Look at that bit of trail magic, as we call it here. Right. Let's head up to Palm Springs. Let's go. We have made it about halfway and we are in Kaduri Farm, which is turning around. And Kaduri Farm and Botanic Garden is a wonderful place to visit, but there isn't a colonial post box here. But what there is at the top, the third generation post office built in 1911, the four stone pillars that were outside the front entrance are here right at the top of the mountain. So if you're coming to Kaduri Farm, check them out. Okay, we have got 20 minutes to get up to Palm Springs before sunset. And what a beautiful little road this is as we head down. We might even see mainland in the distance. Okay, Ida, let's go. Can we see it? And we've made it, the final one here in Palm Springs. And take a look at this. It is a George VI green post box. George VI, Queen Elizabeth's father, here on Palm Springs, just a few miles from the mainland border. A huge thanks to Ida for dropping me here. A huge thanks to the students at my school for giving me so many questions. Just remains for me to do one thing. I need to give it a big hug, don't I? Oh. And my hands touch. That means it's a type B. It's a newer one. And let's just call for a ta taxi i've got no juice left so what can i do i found something over here let's call home get a taxi and finish this a very british way ah. taxi thank you right see you on the next one like and subscribe